Hi everyone, this is Dr. Saiti, Team MDS Conquer. So now I am going to discuss the case based radiographic diagnosis. So here with I have presented little clinical scenario of the cases. So wherein the patient will give you the chief complaint, there are some symptoms and also a clinical presentation will be there. Along with it, there is a radiograph. Okay. So based on the clinical presentation and based on the findings that we get in a radiograph, that is given for that particular case, we have to arrive at that diagnosis. Okay, so that is nothing but the case based radiographic discussion, so which we are going to do now. So, coming to the first one, so here a patient has presented to a clinic and on routine radiographic examination, the patient had mixed radiopic radiolucent lesion which was involving more than one quadrant. Okay, and the very important point to be noted is the teeth were vital. So, there was no problem with the teeth, the associated teeth were vital. So, what is your diagnosis? So, now let us look at the radiograph. So, if you see here, the teeth are vital and you can see some lesions which are present involving the quadrants. So, there is no clinical symptom which is being given by the patient. This was seen as a radiographic finding only because the teeth are vital and there are no symptoms related to the teeth or any problem with the teeth then you have to go for a cement osseous dysplasia. So, this cement osseous dysplasia either it occur can occur as periapically. So, if it is present only with one single tooth it is called as periapical cement osseous dysplasia and if you can see it in one or more areas then you can go for focal cement osseous dysplasia and if it is involving more than one or two quadrants then you have to go for florid cement osseous dysplasia. So, here you can see more lumbar of lesions. So, you can go for fluorid cement osseous dysplasia and it can occur at three stages. So, first one it will be simple radiolucency, next is a mixed radiopaque radiolucent lesion and at times it can be completely radiopaque also. Okay? So, this is regarding the cement osseous dysplasia. So, since it is just a radiographic finding and the teeth are vital, you can go for cement osseous dysplasia. Okay? Now, coming to the next case. So, here there is a young adult patient who has developed swelling and he has also noticed asymmetry in his maxilla 4 years back. Okay? So, underline there is asymmetry of the face and it is since 4 years. So, he has noticed that since 4 years. Okay, so, it has been a long time and it is young adult patient, even that you have to underline. Next, the swelling was very firm in consistency and it is painless. So, it is actually painless and it was firm in consistency. Now, let us see the radiograph. So, a radiograph was taken. So, it is a advanced imaging technique, the CT was taken and if you see, there is a radio opaque lesion with expansion of the maxilla, right? So, there is involvement of the sinus and also there is expansion which goes in favor of a fibro osseous lesion which is nothing but fibrous dysplasia. Okay? So, here if you see there is expansion and the, based on the symptoms that is given by the patient that it is asymmetry was observed and it is not much painful, it is painless and it was very firm in consistency and on a radiographic examination you can also see that it is clearly evident when you compare with the other side, it is clearly evident that it is involving the sinus as well and there is an expansion. Then you have to go for a fibrosis lesion which is nothing but the fibrous dysplasia. Okay? So, this is our second case. Now, coming to the third one. So, here a patient has developed a swelling from the past 3 months. So, there is only swelling since past 3 months and he had pain in the associated teeth for which he had to undergo extractions of the offending teeth. So, very important point already given in the question that is onion peel or onion skin appearance. So, quite simple diagnosis. I think it is already roaming in your mind. So, here it is odontogenic origin because the teeth were painful and he had to undergo extraction and there was a swelling which the patient has observed. The radiographic examination has shown the onion peel appearance. So, this is an axial section which has shown the onion peel appearance clearly, right? So, that goes in favor of osteomyelitis. The garys or the proliferative osteomyelitis gives this peculiar onion skin or onion peel appearance, okay? So, besides 
the osteomyelitis, the proliferative osteomyelitis, there is one more condition or one more disease which also shows this onion skin appearance which is nothing but Ebbing's sarcoma. Okay, even in Ebbing's sarcoma you can find out this onion peel or onion skin appearance but it commonly Ebbing sarcoma occurs in children and very young adults and the patient will most probably complain a pain in the bone. Okay, bone pain will be there and obviously it will not have such similar symptoms, right? So, odontogenic symptoms will not be there, right? So, you have to go for Ebbing sarcoma if the case is given otherwise, like if it is a young patient or a child is given and the pain in the bone, then you have to go for Ebbing sarcoma because it is not odontogenic, right? So, both these cases have the similar radiographic presentation of having onion skin and onion peel appearance, but the clinical findings will be different. So, based on that, you have to arrive at the diagnosis, okay? Next, coming to the other case. So, here the patient has discolored teeth and you can see on examinations, there is some translucent hue that can be seen on examination. So, the radiographic findings are as follows. So, coming to the diagnosis. So, underlining point is a translucent hue, okay. So, if you see now, there is a translucent hue and the radiograph, if you see, there are no pulp chambers. The pulp chambers are obliterated. If you can zoom and see, you can see that the pulp chambers are completely obliterated. So, that is nothing but the shell teeth, right. So, sh shell teeth and having such translucent hue, it is nothing but very simple. I think you must have already come to the answer. It is dentinogenesis imperfecta, right. So, this is how the questions can be asked. They can post a clinical picture, they can give you the symptoms and they will post a radiographic picture as well and they will ask you to come for the diagnosis. So, it is quite simple. The only thing I want to suggest is read word by word, line to line, underline the points and give complete look to the diagram. Observe the diagram completely. Okay, where exactly the abnormality is and what are the findings that you can get out of the diagram that is given. Based on that, you have to come to your diagnosis. Do not be in a hurry to come to a diagnosis. First, note one by one and then give your diagnosis. Okay. Now, coming to the other case. Here, a patient has developed a swelling in the jaw six months back that has gradually increased to the present size and the Radiographically, there was expansion of the cortical plate with a multilocular lesion. Very important point to be underlined. And there is a swelling, okay, and there is expansion of the cortical plate. Now, let us see the radiograph. Very pretty clear the radiograph shows a expansion of the cortical plate, multilocular haphazard lesion, and also there is resorption of the roots of the associated teeth, right. So, this is nothing but a benign tumor which is showing this presentation which is odontogenic origin which is nothing but the ameloblastoma. So, ameloblastoma has this cortical expansion, the eggshell cracking effect, right and also knife as a resorption of the roots will be there and a multilocular lesion. So, all these goes in favor of the ameloblastoma, okay. So, it is pretty clear if you see the diagram. If you observe or if you know all the findings of radiographic findings of ameloblastoma, then you can easily arrive at the diagnosis. So, number one is first the location, right? If you see, it is posterior mandible, number one. Number two, assess the periphery and shape. If you see the periphery and shape, it is ill-defined. There is expansion of the cortical plate and it is completely involving the it is like shape is also completely ill-defined and it is completely involving the entire posterior mandible, right? So, that is the th second thing. Third thing, internal structure. Internal structure, if you see, it is multilocular, right? Fourth thing, effect on the surrounding structures. If you see the fourth point, effect on the surrounding structures, there is a knife edge resorption of the associated teeth. So, four steps, fifth step, formulate your diagnosis. Go for ameloblastoma clear. I hope it is clear, okay. Now, coming to the next case. Here, a patient has developed a severe bone pain in his limbs, okay. So, there is a bone pain. So, the patient himself complains that the pain is within his bone and he has also observed a mild swelling. Now, the radiograph has shown as given in the picture. So, your diagnosis. So, this is an important point to be underlined. So, let us see the radiograph now. 
Now, if you see the radiograph, there is a elevation of the periosteum which is giving this triangle appearance which is nothing but the cordman's triangle. Right? If such presentation of a limb of a long bone is given with a elevated periosteum giving this cordman's triangle appearance blindly go for osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma has the cordman's triangle appearance of the long bones. So, directly you can go for osteosarcoma. Okay? Coming to the next case. So, here a patient has presented with pain and swelling which was felt over the salivary gland area. So, whenever a salivary gland is involved, if you think that the patient is having a problem with the salivary gland, then always better to do a contrast imaging. So, obviously first we will go for an ultrasound, but if we cannot find anything out of it, always better to go for a contrast imaging. Okay? So, radiographic presentation is as follows. If you see the picture, it gives a idea of a hot dog or a sausage string appearance. So, if you see there is a sausage string appearance which is seen in the radiograph right so here the patient was having a problem with or a pain and swelling related to salivary gland and the radiograph has shown a sausage string appearance right so it's nothing but inflammation of the salivary gland duct okay the duct of the salivary gland has been inflamed which has given this hot dog or sausage string appearance which is also called as silodochitis okay so this is silodochitis clear so, the picture, the radiographic picture is very, very important for you to come or arrive at a good diagnosis. Okay? So, there will be options given like Jogren syndrome or uh, Sialidinitis or Sialodochitis. Okay? So, Sialodochitis, sausage string appearance, Jogren syndrome, cherry blossom appearance, Sialidinitis, leafless tree appearance, benign tumor, ball in hand appearance. So, all these appearances is quite important for you to know and if you have to also have the radiographic picture in your brain okay? because you know the names of all the appearances but how they look also you need to know. So, that is the reason I have posted here. So, it is silodochitis which is nothing but the inflammation of the salivary gland duct which gives this sausage string or hot dog appearance. Okay? Now, next coming to the come directly a radiograph. So, I will ask the question. So, here a patient was having a swelling and he has underwent the extraction of the impacted tooth and the radiograph has shown this. Okay? So, there is a unilocular radiolucency with a thin like thin radio opaque border around it and the associated roots of the teeth are normal. There is no problem with the adjacent teeth. right? So, it is a simple unilocular lesion which is having an anteroposterior expansion. So, that is nothing but OKC. OKC has this anteroposterior expansion. It will not have much of buccolingual expansion. It will have this anteroposterior expansion and besides that the associated or the adjacent teeth will not go much of resorption. They will be not they, like you can't most commonly. I am not saying always, most commonly it will not show any resorption of the teeth that is present adjacent to it. Okay? So, that goes in favor of OKC. So, there is anteroposterior expansion which you can clearly see in the picture and the associated teeth appear to be normal. There is no much resorption. So, that is nothing but the OKC. Okay? OKC again either it can occur as unilocular or multilocular, right? but here it is a unilocular presentation. Okay? Next coming to the this case. So, here a patient has underwent an implant and few months after the placement of the implant he has developed severe pain and also there was a discharge of pus from his gingival sulcus. Okay? When a radiograph is taken there you can see there is a radiolucency which is surrounding that particular implant. So, if you see there is radiolucency here. So, it is a simple case of a periimplantitis. Okay, so, the implantitis where the inflammation occurs around the implant, it is nothing but the periimplantitis. Okay, so, it is a very simple case. Now, next go for the other case. So, here if you see a patient has, now again I will ask the question. So, here patient has presented with a discolored tooth and uh, the teeth are 
when a clinical picture was taken the teeth were like this. So, you can see here and there, there will be a red opaque or more red opacity of the teeth or no, sorry not red opacity, opacity the, red, the teeth were more white in color. Okay? So, the, on the clinical presentation here and there the teeth were more white in color and the radiograph it is not that clearly shown here has given a snow capped appearance. If I ask you, I will put if the clinical presentation, if the question is asked, so before seeing this picture, the patient has presented with discoloration of the teeth okay? and there were more opaque or more white areas here and there over the teeth and the radiograph has shown snow capped teeth. So, what is your diagnosis? So, wherever you see the snow capped appearance in a OPG, then you have to go for hypomaturation type of amylogenesis imperfecta. Okay, hypoplastic type shows picket fence appearance, whereas no caput teeth is presented with the hypomaturation type of amylogenesis imperfecta. Okay, so that is regarding this case. Okay, so we are done with almost 10 case presentations now. So, how the case will be asked, what, what is interpretation you have to get from your radiograph and what is or what could be your diagnosis. Okay, amongst the four options, more appropriate diagnosis you have to give. Okay. Now, I will post some questions for you. So, I expect you to give your answers in the comment section below. Okay. You can give your answers as 1, 2 and 3. So, what is your answer for number 1 question? What is the answer for number 2 question? And what is the answer for number 3 question? Okay. After a day or two, I will post the answers in the comment section. Okay. So, with this you can even get to practice of how to answer these radiographs or the case based discussions right. So, coming to the first question. So, here just a radiograph ok, radiograph was presented and you can see an arrow showing a little enlarged surface over the root right. So, if you observe that what is your radiographic diagnosis and in what all conditions will you find this. Okay, so, my question is there is an abnormality here okay, along the root arrow mark which is showing. So, what is your diagnosis and in what conditions do you find this radiographic finding? Okay, so, there is an abnormality there. So, what is that abnormality and where all can you see? Okay, so, that is your first question. Coming to the second question. So, here there are multiple arrow marks which are being shown here. right? So, the patient has bone pain, he has severe pain in the jaws. So, a radiograph is taken. Now, if you see there are multiple lesions which are seen as round punctured lesions, I have already given the hint. So, what is your diagnosis? Okay. So, bone pain and multiple lesions which are small, small like a punched out lesions which are involving the jaws. So, what is your diagnosis? So, this is your second question. So, coming to the third question. So, here there is a child who has presented with bilateral asymmetric enlargement of the jaws. Okay? So, there is asymmetric enlargement of the jaws and the jaws are so bulky as you can see there is chuppy cheeks are there and the 3D, 3 dimensional image has shown multilocular lesion. Right? So, if you see a 3D image, this is a 3 dimensional image. Right? So, and also the teeth appear to be floating here and there. Right? So, what could be your diagnosis? Right? So, these are the three questions. So, that is it. So, I expect you to answer in the comment session below. After a day or two, after all of you has given your answers, I will post the correct answers. Okay? So, these are the three questions. So, if you make yourself habituate to answer such type of case based discussions, it will be easy for you in the exam as well because I know you have studied a lot, but practice makes you more perfect. Okay? So, that is why I expect you to answer. Okay? Do not think if you give a wrong answer, what will I think? Okay? I am not going to judge you, this is not the exam. Okay? So, give your answers whatever you feel so that it makes you perfect. Okay? Thank you.